Hi everyone, my name is Ichiban and today I'm going to teach you how to take this image and add some character and retro glitches to it in Adobe Photoshop. The effects I'll be going through today are reminiscent of old TVs, VHS tapes and are heavily inspired by their glitchy imperfections. There's a certain level of texture and nostalgic character that these errors and technical glitches can add to an image, which is a whole aesthetic in itself. I'll be going through three different types of glitch effects which you can use separately or in a single image. The first one is color channel distortion, where the red, green and blue channels get a little accidentally crossed. The second effect, which is scan lines, an effect that is reminiscent of lower quality screens, something you might see in a security camera monitor for example. And finally, we'll simulate tracking errors, where parts of an image aren't where they're supposed to be. Alright, let's fire off Photoshop and get right into it. The photo we're going to be working on today is a photo I took in Hong Kong. It's a darker nighttime image with strong neon reds and blues. It has that cyberpunk vibe and should work well with these retro effects. So the first thing we're going to work on is color channel distortion. There are two ways to do this. The first way is super easy. It gives you a more simple result, but you can do it really quickly. So the first thing you're going to do is to duplicate the layer. So I'm going to press command and J to duplicate it. We're going to rename it to red. It'll make sense in a second. So you're going to double click the layer to open the layer style settings. There's an R, G and a B, which stands for the red, green and blue channels. We're going to try target red because there's lots of nice reds in this image. So turn the G and the B off and then hit OK. It looks like nothing's changed, but that's fine. So go over to the move tool or you can shortcut press V on your keyboard. Then you're going to make sure the red layer is selected and then you're going to move the layer to the left a little bit. This will give you the channel distortion effect. If you just want to move the layer horizontally, you can hold on to shift which will lock the layer and you can't move it up and down. You can only move on the horizontal axis. So I like it just slightly off to the left a little bit. You can also do the same thing to the blue channel. I'm going to turn this channel off for a second. Command J to duplicate. I'm going to rename it to blue. Same process. I'm going to untick the green and the red channel. Hit OK. And then I'm going to shift it off to the left a little bit. I don't really like the blue channel shift as much. If you turn on the red, it kind of looks like the 3D images you get out of the 3D TVs. I think we're going to stick with red, so I'm going to turn the blue one off. And that's it. That's how easy it is to do method one. Now I'll show you the second method, which is more complicated, but it does give you a slightly different effect. I'll duplicate the layer again, and then we'll call it wave. So once you've duplicated that, you go to the channel. We're going to work with red again, so I'm just going to click red. If it's black and white, it's fine, just bear with it. You're going to go to filters, then you're going to go to distort, and then you're going to go down to wave. These are the settings. You want to make sure that you're in the square type. So there's also triangle and sign, but square works best for this example, just the way that TVs work. Generally, the number of generators, it goes crazier the more you use. I like to use one. If you have a look, you can adjust the settings. Just play with the settings, see what happens. I've settled on these settings. I think it works the best for this image. You can screenshot this and start with these numbers and then play around with the sliders and see what happens. So if I shift it around, this moves the cutouts to the left and the right. I don't want it to be too crazy. I just want it to be shifted slightly just so it gives you that cutout. For the undefined areas, if you click wrap around, you can see there are some artifacts. So for this example, you should use repeat edge pixels. Hit OK. It's still in black and white, which is fine. So you press the RGB channel, which turns everything back on, and then it gives you this effect. So it's the same effect as before. It shifts the red channel, except that it'll cut the image up for you, give you more of a distorted pattern. So this is method one, super easy to do, looks a bit more simple. And then this is method two, a little bit more work, but it does look a lot better. Gives it a bit of randomness and makes it feel a bit more glitchy. All right, so let's move on to the second effect, which is scan lines. We're gonna build on the previous edit and build up this image even more. So the first thing you're gonna do is to click the original background layer and duplicate it. So Command or Control J. We're gonna rename it to scan lines. Then we're gonna drag the layer to the top, which will get rid of the effect because the layer's on the top, as you can see. So with that layer selected, you're gonna go to Filter, Filter Gallery. Then there's a whole bunch of filters. You're gonna go to Sketch and then Halftone Pattern. You wanna make sure that the pattern type is set to Line, which will give you horizontal lines across the frame. Play around with these two sliders. Size will increase or decrease the size of the lines. Be mindful of the contrast as it'll make your image darker or brighter. Then hit OK. 
It'll bring it in black and white, which is fine. So you go to blending mode. With blending mode, because the image is quite dark, I want to hang around this area, but you can test it out. You can hover your mouse over all the different types of blending modes. For this one, I'm going to go darken. Now the image is quite dark because we've added a whole bunch of dark lines to it. So what you can do is lower the opacity a little, get it to a point where you're happy with, I reckon about there. So this is with the scan lines effect on, and this is with it off. Pretty cool looking, right? All right, we're on to our third and final effect, tracking errors. Select wave and scan lines, and then put them into a folder by pressing Command or Control G. Then you're gonna duplicate that. So you can either press Command Control J to duplicate, or you can drag the folder down to this plus icon. And then you right click it, and you're gonna go merge group to rasterize it into an image. Tracking errors, easy. What you do is you go to the rectangular marquee tool, or M on the keyboard. You can select a big area like this, and then you Go to the move tool or V on the keyboard and then hold on to shift horizontal lock and then you're going to shift it ever so slightly. You're going to repeat this a few times just to have some random tracking errors. They don't have to be full rectangles, you can just do like little bits and pieces but just make sure to not go overboard with this as it might look too crazy. Select a little bit there, just shift it ever so slightly. A tip for this technique is to look for the contrasty and straight lines so you can see where you've moved things. So let's move another one down the bottom. Again, don't go too overboard with this. It can get out of control pretty quickly. Let me show you before and after. It's like the image is tearing, which is a pretty cool effect. Here are some sample images with the effects applied to them. Like I said earlier, you don't have to use all of them on the image. It's up to you really. Just experiment and see what looks good. This one, for example, I've only applied the channel distortion and the scan lines. It works on a variety of different images, from cityscapes to portraits of people. So that's how you add retro glitches to your photos in Adobe Photoshop. Thanks for watching, my name's Ichiban and you can find me on Instagram and YouTube. See ya!